Hey there everybody, Scudder here today, and today I would like to discuss with you folks the tribulation period and where there might be a safe place for folks to be during that time. Uh, let me get you started out here with just a little bit of scripture. In Revelation 12, 6 we read, The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. The woman is symbolic of Israel. 1,260 days is exactly three and one half years. That is the standard lunar prophetic years of the Bible with 360 days each. And if you want to read further scripture um, in relation to this, you can read Matthew chapter 21 verses 15 through 22, uh, Luke chapter 21 verses 20 through 24, Zechariah chapter 14 verses 1 through 3 and Joel chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. Now there are a lot of people uh, these days especially who have been talking about uh, the end times and what they're going to do during the reign of the Antichrist and there are whole ministries built on the basis of fleeing to the wilderness and things like that um, and I'm not sure that I completely agree with that sentiment. Um, you know, I think that Christians gathering together uh, in groups or in communities to help each other survive during the tribulation period is a smart thing. And I think that we're all going to need to uh, rely on each other to get through that period. Uh, but there is almost, almost virtually no place on earth that's going to be protected during the Antichrist reign. Now, I know people talk about leaving, uh, you know, places like the United States because they think that it's Babylon and Babylon is going to be destroyed. Um, I've heard some other countries. If you want to leave your country based on that, um, I'll have to leave that up to you. I have not studied it honestly enough to have full authority to speak on those scriptures. Um, I also, uh, you know, if people want to leave their country because of the economic decline and stuff like that, you know, that's a decision that you'll have to make on your own. But if you're basing your decision uh, to leave an area based on the Antichrist reign and where you think you're going to be safe, uh, then, you know, you need to realize that there's going to be almost nowhere on earth that is going to be saved uh, from his power. But I did find something the other night when I was studying, and there is actually going to be one area on this earth that is going to be protected from the Antichrist reign. Let me read you this. This is in the book of Daniel. Okay, uh, I am in chapter uh, book. Let's see, chapter number eleven in the book of Daniel, and we're going to go down to verse forty. It says, "When the time for the end comes, the king of the south will push at him, while the king of the north will attack him like a whirlwind with chariots, cavalry, and a large navy." He will invade countries, overrun them, and move on. He will also enter the land of glory, and many countries will come to grief, but these will be saved from his power, Edom, Moab, and the people of Ammon. Now, if you look on a map of uh, the Middle East, you will see that those areas, the Edom, Moab, and Ammon, are actually areas that are in Jordan. And if I can find a map, I'll put a graphic up if I've got enough time. If not, I'll try to link to it in the more info description. And it's, if you've never done a study on that area, it's actually quite interesting. And in that area is uh, the area of Petra, which was an ancient city. Uh, and I'm going to read you some interesting stuff about that. Let me read this to you. The ancient capital of Edom was the city of Basra. The Hebrew Basra means sheepfold. It lies 30 miles southeast of the Dead Sea in present-day Jordan. The present Jordanian city of Busra, Basra, Busra, is not on any modern road, but is a remote mountain village of difficult access. Ancient Basra at the same location, however, was on the main northwest trade route known as the King's Highway. Uh, you can find that in the book of Numbers, chapter 20, 17. The city was noted for its weaving industry and exports of dyed garments. 
a man, uh, let's see, Edom as the territory allotted to Jacob's brother Esau is documented in Genesis 36. A man named Basra was a descendant of Seir the Horite, who inhabited the land before there were any kings in Israel. The historical record in Deuteronomy includes this parenthetical note. The Emites used to live there, a people strong and numerous, and as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they too were considered Rephites, but the Moabites called them Emites. Horites used to live in Seir, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place just as Israel did in the land the Lord gave them as their possession. That's in Deuteronomy 2, 10 through 12. Edom's long-standing enmity against Israel ultimately brought God's judgment on Edom. Obadiah the prophet devotes his short but potent message to the judgment of Edom, telling us of her pride and arrogance and the reasons for God's final judgment on these two people. Amos wrote of the impending judgment on Edom. This is what the Lord says, For three sins of Edom, even for four, I will not turn back, because he pursued his brother with a sword, stifling all compassion, because his anger raged continually, and his fury flamed unchecked. I will send fire upon Teman that will consume the fortress of Basra. That is in Amos chapter 1, 11 and 12. Several writers have written fine descriptions of Petra and the history of that region of ancient Edom. The Nabataeans displaced the descendants of Esau probably in the 6th century BC. They controlled the entire region as far north as Damascus until the 1st century. Gotta switch page here, sorry. Extensively in Jordan and the area around Basra and Petra was well populated as late as Roman times. Today the area is desolate and sparsely populated because of the very low rainfall and scarcity of natural resources there. South of Basra, 20 miles on the King's Highway is Petra, the capital city of the Nabataeans. Tourists to this vast mountain enclosed ancient city in the Wadi Musa general, generally enter from the east on foot or on horseback through El Sik, a 6,000 feet long narrow cleft with 100 to 500 foot high cliff walls. Tombs and houses carved into the bedrock over the vast area at Petra will be suitable for temporary housing many, many thousands of people. Now, if you've ever looked at pictures of Petra, it's quite amazing. It is this entire city built into the mountains. It's just amazing. Um, and it has stayed intact all of these years. It has also not been populated for a very, very long time. So in order uh, for it to stay intact as it has, you know that God's hand has had to be in that. Now I am under the belief that if a person is in that area, that is going to be the only safe place on earth during the Antichrist reign. We don't know why uh, God chose that area in particular. We just know that he did. So, um, you know, anyone who thinks that they're going to be in the United States or the United Kingdom or anywhere else uh, and be safe from what the Antichrist has planned, especially for Christians and Jews, then you've got another thing coming. So you guys might want to do some research on this and do some studying. I'm not telling everybody to pack up their bags and move them and their families over to Jordan. Uh, you know, that's something that you would have to pray about. Um, but we do know that when the temple is, is uh, desolated, then we know that, that God has told all of the Jews who understand to flee that area immediately. And I believe that he is going to carve out a, a, a path for them to get from Jerusalem to this area in Jordan. And that is where Jesus is going to protect those people for the next three and a half years until his final return to earth. So that's just something that I wanted to share with you guys today. You're free to leave comments below. Uh, if you would like, I'm going to leave the comments open so you guys can have at it. And, uh, you know, you can share your thoughts on it if you want. But uh, you can argue with me if you'd like. 
but I'm reading it straight from God's Word, so it's something that you're going to have to take up with God, okay? So you guys take care. God bless, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.